insanity! Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of Stop the Pinsanity! Okay, well today we are going to do a pin that actually this is something for my daughter. She is going to be participating in some kind of demonstration at school and it's based on the Renaissance and so she wanted some kind of Renaissance style dress and being a mother with three kids, a job, all kinds of things. I'm very short on time and of course money. So instead of going and buying a $150 Renaissance dress, I found a tutorial on Pinterest that shows how to make a very simple one out of a big piece of fabric. And so I'm going to make this for my daughter to wear the day after tomorrow. I'm a very um, last minute mom. <laughs> I have a dress form, but you do not need a dress form. All you need is a nice, you know, measuring tape. And I am going to show you how to do this step by step. And first you need to pick out your fabric. This is actually inside out because I'm working with it inside out, but it's a really pretty soft velvety fabric. Um, I got all my supplies today from Joanne's Fabric and uh, just love that store. So many choices. And I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to set up the camera so you can kind of see from above and we will get started. First things first, you're going to want to pin the sides of your fabric completely or else you're going to have, ow, I poked myself. You're going to have uh, uneven edges and it's going to make your process a lot more difficult. Alright guys, so I want to be able to show you as much as possible so I'm going to have all kinds of angles when you're watching this video. What I have done, first off you want to get your fabric and you want to fold it in half and you're going to have the longer side is going to be the back um, and you can see that in the picture. And so what I did is I found center which conveniently there was a fold line from when I purchased it and left it sitting in the bag for weeks and weeks. <laughs> you can also iron a fold line if you want and that's going to be my center and then I measured my daughter and she's between eight and nine inches um, from her base of her collarbone to her bust line so what I wanted to do to make sure the bust line was going to be wide enough because she's 36 inches so I'm going to sew on the outside of that to allow a little room. But what I did is I went down my nine inches and then I split the difference because you got two sides. And this has a little give to it too, so that'll be good. And I marked where the armpits should probably be, where the sleeve should start. Now in the pin, it shows making the neck hole. And this specific fabric I picked because it doesn't fray at the edges. If I can show you, it's it's just a, kind of a nice fabric that you don't have to sew if you don't want. And since I'm greatly short on time, um, that's what we're going to do. My daughter's roughly 15 inches from shoulder to shoulder and I don't want to make this super super low cut so we're going to do let's say 12 inch neck hole wide maybe 10 let's check the mannequin yeah 10 would be better so we're gonna use the 5 on our center line there and I am going to go ahead and use, sorry I keep bumping the camera, pins to mark what I'm wanting to do. Pins are your friend because you don't want things to unravel, get an or, you know, 
the layers to get messed up because then you're going to have a botched job and you don't want that. So, now my pins mark my line. So this is where the neck hole is going to go. Now, that can be a little scary. I would go down about halfway from the bust, so four and a half, five inches to about right there. I'm just going to steal a pin from over here. <laughs> and this is going to be your, so you're going to go whoop, just like that. And now it begins. This is the first time I've made this too, so don't freak out. Um, we all have a beginning. To make sure it's even. And what you can do is you can get a piece of chalk. Since this is the inside, it's not going to hurt nothing. Again, another reason why the pins are important because you can see that fabric when I hit it, it moves. But since the pins are there, hopefully you can see with my ta da! Nicole! So it'll go in the front and the back, it'll have a nice scoop to it. And keep those pins in there until you're ready to put, um, you need to put a couple more in for, just for luck. Now, the pin also says, I'll scooch this down a bit, that we are going to cut the fabric at the top. So that's this part right here. Within four inches of the neck hole. Let's do five. That sounds safe, right? Five inches. So again, pin, pin, pin. So we're gonna do five inches. That way I feel a little safer. <laughs> And what you're going to do, and I would, again, just for safety, do a couple pins down the length. That way, as you're cutting this way, it's not shifting back and forth. And that way, you know you're having straight lines. Okay. Okay, so we're going to just cut straight down here. And what I'm, I'm putting my hand here and pulling away from the fabric as I'm cutting so that it straightens that edge. And I'm gonna cut all the way to there. Just a straight line. Okay, so now we're gonna work on the sleeves. And I've actually already done it to the other sleeve, but I wanted to make sure I did it right so that I tell you how to do it right. So what we're going to do is if you remember this is where we marked where the under the arm armpit area would start for the sleeve. This is going to be because it's going to be a loose fitting. Um, so we're going to start here and I'm going to use, you can use a yardstick. I just use my measuring tape and I stick a pin through it. And I point it right against the little nub thingy there, <laughs> little ball, so that it sticks. And then we're going to angle it, because see this is going to be how the triangular shape of the sleeves. You don't want it to move. And I'm going 
going to make it where it doesn't come to like an actual point. Um, I'll show you kind of a close-up of what this looks like so you can kind of get what I'm talking about. And I'm going to put a pin in it. I love these plastic tape measures, right? Okay. And then I'm going to take some chalk. Again, since this is the inside. And I'm just going to go along that edge so that I can see where I need to be cutting. Try to keep it straight because fabric does move. And depending on the fabric that you choose for this design, yours may move a little more than mine because this is a pretty heavy, velvety. Alrighty, now while I have that on there, I'm going to take my pins, like I said, pins, that's what's going to save you all the time on this, and you're going to pin on either side of this, because that's what you're going to use, you're going to have to cut up this and then sew, so go ahead and put your pins in. All right, so now we have all our pins in. We can take our measuring tape out. You'll see we have a nice line, and then we're going to be able to just sew along. That's a little close. Make sure you leave enough space so that you're, you know, you can put your sewing machine down through there. And I'm going to show you a little bit closer up of what it looks like. And this right here shows how I did the other side. As you can see, I used the chalk to make the line. That's where the armpit's going to start. This is kind of the chest line right here. And on either side of the chalk line, I put pins. These pins, once I cut, will make it so nothing separates, it's still straight, and I can sew along this line right here, and this one right here, and it saves a lot of time in the long run, because, whoops, <laughs> you're going to want to pin it before you try to sew anything. Okay, and now we're going to cut along this line. I'm actually going to go a little into the backing because we're going to be sewing that so that it's a straight um, goes into one another. So. And as you see, this is going to be one of the arm lengths. So now it's time to get the sewing machine out. Oh dear. Okay, we're ready to go. We're all lined up. Um, those pins, you can see how handy they are now because instead of having to go through, line everything up, pin it, you've already got it pinned. Um, I would definitely put your sewing machine on a really tight stitch. Zigzaggy. I honestly don't know stitch names. I just know what they look like. So. <laughs> So it's the zigzaggiest you can find, and it sews pretty tight, so um, let's get started. And don't pull, just guide. Um, if you pull, it'll, it'll come out looser, so. Okay. So now we're at where it's going to turn and it's going to be the armpit. So, like I said, this side's a little more difficult than the other side, but... So we're going to turn it sideways. And we're going to sew this too. And I'm going to go over it several times because I like the armpit area to be pretty strong. Now, we're going to 
turn to go down the rest of the dress. And this is, like I said, <laughs> a lot more difficult. Could have flipped it from the other side, but I like a challenge. Right now, just trying not to get stuck with it. sewing because nobody wants to sit and watch me sew for 20 minutes so um what we have here it's still inside out is you can see what's going to be your train now um nobody wants a square train I mean I guess you could if you wanted to but what I am going to do to make it easier and even I'm going to fold it in half edge to edge of the front to edge in the edge of the back. There's a little overlap there, that's alright. Because you don't know if your lady at the sewing store cut it exact, but you want it exact based on the front of your dress. So now you can do it one of two ways. You can wing it, which is what I usually do <laughs> or you can chalk it I'm gonna wing it Got my nice chair here holding the dress so it's not so dragging on the ground what you're gonna do is you're gonna go from this edge and you're just going to make that corner a little more circular Okay, let's see how it turned out. It's going to be easier to tell when it's on a person as opposed to a table. But that kind of rounded it out a little bit better. Okay, so we got the dress on Belle. Say hi, Belle. Hi. And now we need to do a little bit more measuring. I got these big fancy buttons at Joann's for $1.50 each. They have kind of an old look to them. And what we're going to do, because right now, stretch your arms out. She stretches her arms out, that falls down. And we don't want that. We want to be able to pull the sleeves up just a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew the buttons in right there, um, arm out. Just below the elbow so that it kind of pulls the sleeves up off the ground. So I'm going to use the safety pin to mark the spot. It's just a little bit from the elbow. And then other side. And that will help keep the sleeves from going all the way back here. It gives them a little more, her a little more room to move them around. So I'm going to get those buttons on and then I'll be right back. So there you have it. We added some buttons so that the sleeves are a little more flowy, not just falling beside the dress. We've got the rope here. To make it fit just right, I put some gold safety pins, little tiny ones, to spread it out and uh, it's a nice little off the shoulder piece. Like I said, this fabric is made so that you don't necessarily have to sew the seam. Um, obviously if this was a piece we were going to keep for a long, 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 long time, we would. But since it's for a school play, um, I'm leaving the edges unsewn. And um, have fun with it. 
Um, if you have a fabric that's a little more flowy, maybe needs some sewing, you're definitely going to have to sew the edges, roll it under, sew it. But um, as you can see, it's big and flowy and um, very Renaissance, very Guinevere. So I hope you enjoyed this post. If you did, definitely comment, like, and um, let me know what you thought. And until next time, bye.